Petey Greer's here. I just got from the dentist and my mouth is numb, so let's see if I can talk. Anyway, what I got going on today is a knife that is an absolute stunner, in my opinion. Uh, this is such a cool knife. It's a whole new uh, pattern uh, for my collection, but it's something I'm going to investigate in the future. So what we got today is a five-bladed cattle knife, three-layer cattle knife, five blades. It's got this wonderful shield in it. Uh, you know, it's bovine bone, amber colored. I think it's, it's probably much darker. It's probably just the uh, the old dyes they used to use, just like the dyes on guitars in the 50s and stuff. And, you, and well, of course, before that. Uh, you know, the red and brown dyes weren't very color fast. So you get these, you know, like the amber bone that Case offers. It's basically trying to look like an old faded knife that's been carried around for years and has all the UV damage. Uh, they do the same exact thing on guitars. Uh, you can get a Les Paul in 15 different shades of sunburst, but they're all variations on the original cherry sunburst and how to what degree the cherry, the red dye, had faded away in the color. Uh, same thing going on here. But first up, we got no back tools. Man, this thing is sharp. And it's got a cool story. So I bought this from eBay. Uh, and uh, the guy selling it on eBay was selling it for his neighbor. And his neighbor is 95 years old. Uh, he asked me, I'm not going to use his name. But the gentleman, he was the original owner of this knife. When he was nine years old... Uh, oh, about. He, this is according to his memory, which is foggy at best. Uh, he, he's he's an elderly gentleman. He uh, has advanced dementia, uh, so sometimes uh, he can explain things clearly, and other times, especially later in the day, forget about it. But what I'm saying is, this knife was bought by this uh, kid's dad for him to take on his first cattle drive. And his family was uh, a owned a huge ranch in Texas. They uh, and they were one of the last families still doing the old-fashioned commercial cattle drives. Now the last official cattle drive is 1972, but I'm pretty sure that was an, basically an exhibition type cattle drive. They still do like little cattle drives, but they're not done for commercial reasons anymore. But so to this, to be one, this is a little piece of cowboy Western Americana, you know, that tells a story. It's so cool, man. It's so cool. I've literally never seen another life like this. I didn't know this existed. Well, let's get into it. First up, we've got this punch. Now, first, doesn't look like nothing special. It just looks like a typical punch. See, you flip it over. It's a spiral punch. Now, Boker and Camillus, they both made these, uh, so keep that in mind, but Spiral Punch. Next up is the, what makes this a cattle knife, really, a spay blade. And this spay blade has been used many times to do exactly what it's intended to do. And if you need to Google what it means, because you never owned a cat or something like that, then you'll know that, you know, this this blade has done some, this blade has been in some horrible places. Let's just put it that way. It's done, it's seen some shit. This knife has seen some shit, for sure. Let's go to the rest of the little blades. We've got a little pen blade. This is unusual for a typical cattle knife is three blades. The uh, a main blade, which is some occasionally, you know, a unique blade, but typically just a scout type blade or maybe a clip blade. A uh, spay blade, and then it'll either have a punch or another small blade. This one has five blades, so we've got a pen blade in, and then next we've got this ginormous, beefy, awesome clip blade. It's got the recurve to it. I mean, this is such a cool blade. It's yeah, it's been used a little bit, but it's basically intact. It's basically its original shape. That is super cool, man. And that's just a huge, it reminds me of the clip blades on like the uh, six bladed Boker uh, camp knife, uh, the Remington trail hand, stuff like that. It has a really stout clip blade. Last but not least, here's the main blade. 
clearly heavily used, but also very well taken care of. This is what a knife should use look like after literally 50 plus years of daily use in its designed use. Uh, you rarely see a knife that was carried by somebody and actually used for the purpose that it was that the name implies. You know, just because you see a cattle knife, I, I don't think a lot of cattle knives were carried by cowboys, but this one was. So that's pretty cool, you know. And uh, here's the stamp: high carbon steel. Here's where the little question comes in. This was purchased. Uh, he verified it was purchased from Sears and Roebuck. I was able to find some old catalogs and find a picture of the five-bladed cattle knife. Uh, the one I found had a different shield on it, but I'm sure Sears probably would have just uh, sourced them from whatever maker they were using at the time, and the maker would have put whatever shield they were using at the time. So that doesn't surprise me. Uh, but uh, so I'm thinking, my thoughts are that, I'm to I, at first I thought this might be uh, made by either uh, Remington or Boker, uh, I don't know that I don't know if Remington did hardware store knives or Sears knives. I you know I don't know that it's construction similar so similar between them and Boker since Boker basically, uh, since Remington was basically started with uh, some cut, master cutlers from Boker were hired over to the Remington cutlery shop and they used mostly Remington's patterns like the humpback and, and scout knives and stuff. Or right, Remington used Boker's patterns. But, uh, you know, I'm starting to lean towards Camillus. The shield looks like other Camillus shields I've had. I've seen the Camillus knives with these same uh, lined bolsters. You know, uh, it doesn't, it's either way, it's an extremely well-made, high-quality knife. Whoever made this, this was a grade A, professionally made, professionally designed, and intended for serious use knife. And I absolutely love it. The fact that it's still intact and together and not damaged, nothing's loose, all the blades move. I mean, the guy said he carried this. He, he, he only stopped carrying it a few years ago when he stopped going out, stopped being able to drive and get around on his own. He basically stopped carrying knives and stuff because he, I guess he's, I think he lives in a home or something like that. But, uh, man, so I, I, I'm really, uh, am, uh, grateful to, to them for uh for passing this on to me and i will ensure that it's stories told and ensure that it it sees uh hopefully many years well beyond my time because that's what i see my purpose as as a knife collector is to save and preserve them for future uh nerds like myself you know knife nerds i just say nerds with a k you know the silent k you know what it is but anyway thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one. Probably going to have a couple extras up. I, I've got a surplus of knives coming in right now. So probably going to squeeze a couple extra videos out when I got time. So keep an eye out for that. I'll see you in the next one. Peter Greer is out.